Being able to control the rate of messages passing through a flow or delaying messages before they pass on is a useful skill to have in Node-RED. The core palette includes two nodes that can help you do just that, the delay node and the trigger node. This video looks at how these nodes can be used to help control the flow of messages. The delay node can be used to apply a delay to each message that passes through the node. The delay can be hard-coded into the node itself, it can pick a random delay between two given values, or set dynamically for each message using the message.delay property. This can be used to create a flow that performs a coordinated sequence of actions. For example, this flow will enable a GPIO pin, wait 5 seconds and then disable it. The delay node offers another mode of operation, rate limiting mode. This attempts to normalise the rate at which it sends messages according to its configuration. For example, if the node receives a burst of 10 messages in very quick succession, this node will let them through at a rate of 1 per second. This can be useful if the flow interacts with an external system that applies a restriction on how quickly you can submit requests to it. Another example would be if a sensor sends a reading every second, but you only want to sample the reading every 10 seconds. In this case, we configure the node to rate limit to one message per 10 seconds, but we also tick the Drop Intermediate Messages box. This means the node will drop any message that arrives quicker than it's configured to handle. The other node that can be useful for creating flows that react to the flow of messages is the Trigger node. Some of the flow patterns it enables include automatically sending a second message after a set time, creating a flow that sends a message if it does not receive anything after a set time, or resending a value at a set interval. Let's look at each of those in turn. The first pattern is sending a second message after a set time. Here the node is configured to send on any message it receives, then wait for 5 seconds and send a second message. Like the original delay node example, this could be used to turn off an LED connected to a GPIO pin after a set time. But now, if we tick the Extend Delay option, the node will only send that second message 5 seconds after the last message it received. This mode can be used to build a watchdog style flow that will send something only if it doesn't receive anything after a set time. Here's an example of where that's a useful thing to do. We have an MQTT node receiving data every few seconds from a remote device. That data is handled by the main body of the flow, but at the start we branch the flow and feed it into a trigger node. This node is configured to send nothing initially and only send something after 15 seconds with the extend delay option ticked. Now, if the sensor stops sending its data for some reason, the trigger node will send its second message which can be used to alert the absence of sensor data. Another scenario is sending placeholder data if the sensor stops sending. This can be achieved using a pair of trigger nodes. The first trigger node is configured to wait 5 seconds after receiving its last message before sending on a message. That message will cause the second trigger node to start sending a zero every 5 seconds as the placeholder sensor reading. The first trigger node is also configured to send through a reset message as soon as it does receive something and the second trigger node is configured to stop sending its placeholder sense reading when it receives that reset. So this combination of trigger nodes will cause the placeholder sense reading to be sent if there is a gap of greater than 5 seconds between sense readings, but as soon as the sense readings resume, the first trigger node will reset the second trigger node, stopping its sending the placeholder values. You can see more about each of these patterns in the Node-RED cookbook.